Hello, I'm Edward Court, and welcome to the ninth video tutorial on using Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind musical instruments. In this video, we're going to discuss the Fipple Factor. We'll discuss what that Fipple Factor is, how you would use it in a design-build workflow, how you can determine its value for flutes under construction or for finished historical flutes. And we'll ask the burning question, does it matter if you get it right? And we'll look at some scenarios um, for a flute that you've made according to design specs or one that you can modify the hole size and bore length. That is, you've drilled the holes, you've made the flute longer, and what effect does it have if you in the initial design got the the Fipple factor incorrect. So let's get started. What's a Fipple factor? In my old, meaning I wrote it several years ago, program uh, NA Flutomat, there were two two factors, the TSH factor and the bird fetish factor, that attempted to measure the effect of the geometry at the top of the flute, at the fipple, um, the effect of the bird and the effect of the shape of the splitting edge. Uh, those factors are combined in um, the fipple factor that is used in WI Designer. So let's bring up the program and open up an instrument that we're, you've probably seen many times before. So this value here is the Fipple factor. Uh, it's dimensionless. It doesn't matter what unit of measure you're using. Um, and I find that a typical value is uh, 0.75. What this factor measures is how much shadowing of the TSH is accomplished by the the bird geometry. So it's going to be different for each of your particular geometries in that location. So how would you use it? And um, in my typical workflow, before I've cut any wood at all, um, I'll design a flute uh, and I'll use a historical value of this Fipple factor for laying out that design. Then I'll start cutting wood, um, measure uh, the bore profile, measure the TSH length and TSH width and the flue depth, um, and then and the the bore length in particular, and I'll put the flute together and play a note and using uh, an optimizer that we'll go through in detail today, determine for that particular flute what its fipple factor is. Then I'll use that factor to lay out the holes. So I'll again do a design and lay out the holes based upon now known fipple factor and then I'll drill the holes and, and tune the flute. So that's my normal normal workflow. So let's let's see how we we determine the Fipple factor. And first we'll do it with that scenario, a flute under construction first. Um, so I have a flute that doesn't have any holes in it. And um, I've measured its its Bore, bore profile, and I've measured uh, these values. Let's do the simple case first. So let's take this flute, and let's assume this was the bore profile. And um, for some reason, because 0.75 is the right answer, let's change that value to, to 0.85. And let's get rid of the holes that were in my original design implementation for this flute. I selected the first 
uh, hole and now I'm holding the shift key and selecting the last hole and I'm going to delete those rows. Okay, now I have a flute with no holes, which is what we're going to measure. I'm going to bring up a tuning file and let's see if I've given us an appropriate tuning file. Go back to the desktop, go to the, the samples and tunings and I didn't give us one so let's make one. Go to the tuning wizard do a new tuning and let's go immediately to the last page and zero hole flute that's what we want so we'll create a new tuning <clears throat> with no holes um, we'll give the one note name uh, let's just call it note because we're going to use it uh, in the future and we were doing a 440 flute let's assume that that flute was cut to length and it really did measure 440 Hertz and we don't have to do anything with the fingering it doesn't have any holes still don't have a save let's give it a name and some description for use with Fipple factor calculations and let's save it so as you recall from the tutorial on the tuning wizard um, this is not hot linked into the memory used for optimization we'll need to save that file so we'll save it. Let's put it where we have the other files that were samples. And tunings. And let's just call that no whole tuning. Okay, it's saved. We can close this and let's now open it. And there it is. Okay, just what we want. Now, each time we use that with a different flute we would just change the frequency and I'll come in it after I've done this little quick portion uh, with how you get frequency since most of you myself included use a tuner that really just does note and sense so now we've done created the flute created the, the tuning and we're going to do fipple factor for easy use because as a prior tutorial I, I indicated you're not going to change the parameters in this constraint um, it's dimensionless and we just have a huge range of 0.2 to 1.5 um, for its bounds uh, we'll just open up that default and let's name it something so we don't get confused and let's call it Fipple factor constraints. And now we can do an optimization of the flute that we had and that set that optimizer with that constraint value. We hit it and it will always find a zero error and it says for that flute the FIPPLE factor is 71.713 
um, if we check that tuning. Now the reason why it's not 0.75, and we'll come back and, and see how it should be 0.75, is because this was for a flute of this length with holes in it. And we've taken out the holes, we haven't changed the length. But that's how you would then get the FIPPL factor for an existing flute. Um, Let's make it a little bit more complicated because typically things are a little bit more complicated. Um, going to open up um, what is a, a flute that I've just made. And we get a warning because the tuning has zero holes and I'm opening a flute that has six holes. It's just a warning. And here is that flute. Um, so I've gone through the design phase with um, my estimated uh, FIPPL factor. But you can see I have a very complex bore profile. Uh, and I've already entered in values here. So here's what my bore profile is. Now you can see it has a curved top of the bore has a little choke at the end. It made a very nice flute, by the way. Um, after I've entered these for the FIPPL factor calculation, if I delete all of those holes, I still want to get this file back. So when you create um, the flute that has the measurements that you have and the bore pro profile that you want and you don't want to enter all these values for, for the six holes even if um, they're, they're just design values. Enter all of this information with an existing close um, flute and then save it. And then after you're done saving it, um, then you can delete all the holes. Don't save it at that point calculate your FIPPL factor, copy that FIPPL factor then into a newly opened um, copy of this flute with six holes. Hope that makes sense. Um, it just saves you having to enter all of this information again. So now let's do the historical um, flute. So, so you have an, a historical flute and um, I'm going to close this and reopen it. So the same scenario we talked about before. Um, close it and open it again. Again, that same warning message. Each time you open a file, it will give it to you if appropriate. Um, and um, our holes are back. We didn't save over the top of that. We're going to change this to 0.85 again. So now this is a historical flute. Um, it's one that you're going to, to measure and then see what its FIPPL factor is so you can do your first design. Um, so you're going to measure carefully um, the TSH length, the width, the flute depth. You're not going to have a measure of that. Um, whatever measures you have for the bore profile um, and the, the outer diameter at the bottom of the flute. You're not going to worry too much. In fact, you're not going to worry at all um, about the hole positions or hole, hole diameters or the height. Um, these will be close enough because the closed hole correction that you'll be using uh, doesn't much it doesn't have a big effect. Uh, so these these values will be close enough. Um, now we're going to bring up a tuning file um, for a six hole flute. And it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to bring up the chromatic tuning even if you don't intend to make a chromatically tuned flute. Um, because all the FIPPL factor optimizer is going to look at is the lowest note. And in this case, and you really want it to be, a note where the fingering pattern is all holes closed. 
So here you would enter that same value that you measured when you played the flute. Um, in this case, 440 hertz. And for the flute itself, um, you would enter um, carefully this value. And now let's do an optimization on using this chromatic tuning, this, um, this flute with all six holes intact, and for its constraints, um, let's again create default constraints. Uh, it doesn't matter how many holes, the optimizer is only looking to change one thing, the FIPPLE factor, so it's the same constraint. Uh, in fact, let's close this one and um, oh, I closed the other constraint, so it's not recognized because we had a different number of holes. So let's just um, create those that default constraint. Everything is set the way we want it and let's do an optimization. And as I indicated what happened, now we're back to exactly that 0.75. The difference of having the holes and the, and the closed hole correction um, made that difference between 0.71 and 0.75. So I hope that isn't too complicated. Um, and as I promised, I, I will show you now how to, to get uh, frequencies from your chromatic tuner that may only give scent deviation. Um, and I'll show you two different ways, um, all readily available. I decided not to put um, a pitch to, to frequency calculator in Woodwind Instrument Designer because there are so many readily available. Um, the first one that comes to mind um, is one that li lives in uh, an A flutomat, and that's this little guy right here. This little um, note to frequency conversion, where you can enter a note, um, and this uses uh, Helmholtz notation. You might not like that, but it suppose. It was 20 cents flat, and you convert, that's what its frequency is. Or if it were right on, there's our 440. So that's one calculator. Um, fairly lightweight. It's available both as a download, and I'll show you the URL for it so you have it locally, or you can use it online on Clint Goss's uh, Flutopedia. Another option, and there are probably many out there, um, is a utility that Clint, got. Clint wrote, again in Flutopedia, that is accessible online. And that's his pitch to frequency calculator. A um, little, little prettier interface than in NA Flutomat. Um, and you can use that as well. Okay. Um, I think we've covered what is a FIPPLE factor, um, how you use it, and how you determine its values under um, a couple of scenarios. Now the burning question, do you need to, uh, to get it right? What, are the what is the effect of not specifying it correctly? So let's clean up a little bit. And let's set this back to what it was. And ask the question. So um, for it's the simple scenario, and I'm going to open up another tuning file, which is just the, the simple um, minor tuning that we've used before. So it just is, is 
uh, the notes that are the cross fingered notes essentially are all set to a weight of zero which means they won't be used in any calculations either tuning calculations or an optimization and let's look at this this flute um, with that minor tuning and it should be right on and it is right on um, so no deviation at all so let's ask the first question what would what would happen if I made that flute according to to these design specs so I cut it to 12.79 inches I put the holes in these positions uh, uh, with um, these sizes and um, instead of the fipple factor being 0.75 like I thought it was and I didn't measure it before I drilled the holes um, it was really 0.85 so let's tune that flute and that's a pretty horribly tuned flute uh, we're on average 35 cents off um, for for just those those six notes seven notes I wish I could count um, so that would certainly be unacceptable but of course we don't typically make flutes that way at least I hope you don't uh, what you typically do is you'll create a flute that's a little bit longer in the bore and holes a little bit undersized so what effect would it have if we took this flute that was specified incorrectly and just saw what happens if we made the holes the correct size and made the bore length the correct size to what we actually measured for the tuning so let's use this hole size uh, optimizer and if well let's bring up the the constraints and we'll just again use the default constraints and you can see all it's doing is changing the hole diameters of the six holes with very broad boundaries an eighth of an inch to a half an inch um, sh that shouldn't be a concern for us also notice it does not change the bore length so we'll have to do some bore length changes um, by hand so we're going to take that flute that has um, really a 0.85 fibble factor and it was designed for 0.75 and without changing the hole positions we're going to see we're going to just change the hole sizes and optimize it and so let's do that we've got hole size optimizer and uh, we're just doing the minor tuning in this case and we optimize it and we still have a have a substantial error but let's see what it is so we'll check the tuning and most of that error is in the the bottom note which is essentially the bore length and that is uh, 30 about 30 cents sharp and as I said that optimizer doesn't change bore length so let's make by hand this bore um, 30 cents flatter and good rule of thumb is or a fair rule of thumb is that you get about a hundred cents per inch and this will vary by the key of the flute and the bore diameter but let's just add uh, 0.3 inches to, to the length of that so let's make it um, 13 um, something and actually I know what that answer is so we're gonna make it 13.06 inches and we're just gonna check well let's optimize it again and so we're taking that flute on title 2 and optimizing it now we have a final error that's virtually zero and it is zero um, with rounding error it's it's essentially 
essentially zero. And so what that means is that for this simple scenario, it really didn't hurt us um, if we got that FIPPLE factor wrong um, by a pretty large margin from 0.75 to 0.85. Um, what's the difference in the flute? Let's compare Untitled 3 to the starter, what we started with. And the holes changed. Um, well, the bottom holes changed in size and diameter much more than the top holes. And they changed, oh, about 10%. They went from 0.31 to 0.28. So they got smaller. If we had some concerns about those holes being too small before, um, then we have really big concerns now. Um, and the the bore length changed by by a quarter of an inch. That is probably acceptable to um, your normal flute construction. However, if you have a more complicated flute, and I think you can live with me for for doing that kind of optimization. Let's see if we have the same um, effect that it doesn't matter. So let's get rid of this guy which is just the minor tuning and we still have the chromatic tuning up there which is There's the chromatic tuning with all, and it was already up with with all of the notes selected. And I already know that this note's going to kill us, so I'm going to set that to a way to zero. There's there's two fingering patterns that I typically use uh, for the the minor ninth, and so let's only use one of those fingering patterns. And First, we'll look at the tuning of the original flute, and we're going to set it back to its original FIPPLE factor, 0.75. Remember, we're going to compare the design to the, um, to the misspecified FIPPLE factor. Let's see what its tuning is right now. Delete this guy. And these notes are, are off a fair amount, so let's make a better, uh, better flute by optimizing for all of them. So let's do a whole size and position. And let's open one, open our constraints, and let's make it an inch and a quarter. So there's the constraint set that we're going to be using. It'll change bore length, it'll change the positions of all the holes, and it'll change the diameters of all the holes. Okay, we're set up for an optimization. And we'll run it. Um, we still have some error, but let's see how much. It's not a bad flute. Um, and I think we'll just leave these values. Well, let's play with it a little bit. So um, the fundamental, the root note, is off by a little bit more than I would like. So let's delete this guy. Uh, let's bring up the tuning again and let's weight that bottom note. Um, instead of one, let's weight it two. So it, the optimizer will. Uh, worry about the tuning of this this hole more this note more than the other other ones and let's see what that happens happens so again we select the starter optimize it shouldn't give us quite as good an optimization value but it has the notes that we care about more in tune and you saw that 
Well, I can show you that um, the A4 went from 6.5 cents out to 3.9 cents out. Um, the octave is it's it's marginal we could put a weighting of that but let's just leave it the way it is and um, you see we went from an average deviation of 4.8 to an average deviation of 4.9 there is no magic in the world you you add constraints and you don't get a, as good a tuning solution so now let's um, take this flute and let's actually let's um, name it chromatic start and we'll we'll save its tuning because I'm going to mess with this a little bit okay and now it says chromatic start we know what we're talking about and let's misspecify the fipple factor. We'll set it to 0.85. Now, when we do that and just check its tuning, it's, of course, going to be horrible. That same um, big jump in tuning. It's not a uniform jump, you'll notice. Uh, some notes are off by more than others. Let's see what would happen again with just changing the hole size and the the bore length so I'm bringing that up again and we'll open the constraint we'll create a default constraint and we'll optimize that chromatic start with the chromatic file and look at its tuning and again we're going to have to by hand modify its bore length and again we'll put about 0.3 in here so um, 13 we'll put the same length that we had before 13.06 let's just optimize from that one really wouldn't matter okay and check its tuning so in this case um, instead of having the same uh, deviation as we had between the two scenarios with the, the very simple uh, minor tuning uh, it's worse but more interesting is it's it's not uniformly worse. Some notes get quite bad. Let's look. So I'm just lining them up. And so some notes didn't change at all. Some notes changed by almost 10 cents. Um, and so if this is within the range of difference that you can tolerate then the answer is you can live just fine with misspecifying um, the fipple factor between your design and your actual build uh, for my own use and, and making flutes for my customers uh, this difference is is not acceptable i try to make flutes that are are well tuned within five cents and I've just gotten killed way past um, my tolerance I can hear 13 cents difference quite well and so this would be an unacceptable flute so I measure the fipple factor um, before I drill holes for every single flute and I also keep an, an historical record for every flute I make so that I have a good estimate um, before I go into the design process of what that fipple factor um, will be. So uh, different strokes, you can start off easy and typically that means you're doing straight bore flutes, you're not doing fully chromatic flutes, um, and you can misspecify that fipple factor quite a lot. Uh, that, 
the program gives you a range of analness that you want to implement. So I think that's all I want to talk about. Let me now show you some URLs. So as always, um, the latest release of WI Designer may be found at this, this URL. If you find issues, uh, enhancement requests, discussion items, uh, please uh, use our issues page. Uh, check often for the video tutorials. This won't be the last one. Um, for written documentation, check out the wiki. And this is the entry point for using WI Designer. And for the URL for those uh, frequency calculators, um, the, the first one is uh, the download in the Native, Native Flute Woodworking uh, Yahoo group um, for NA Flutomat so that you can have it locally. Uh, if you're, you're happy with having it online and like a very much prettier presentation of it, Clint Goss's um, implementation in Flutopedia is at the second URL. And the final one is Clint's uh, pitch to frequency converter. So with that, have a good day.